Hey guys and gals and welcome back to the channel. I have a couple questions I'd like to ask you and it's in reference to legitimately one of my favorite watches that I've ever owned, which is this Tissot Powermatic 80. Let's be real, this watch is far from a secret. There's billions of reviews on it and it's been covered well and it gets a lot of love and also quite a bit of hate. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's overdone. And by that I mean, this watch deserves the love that it's getting legitimately. The people that hate on it, I think, have expectations of it being something more than it's claimed to be. Kind of ingrained from an early age that more is always better, right? You know, the more expensive the car, the more expensive the house, the more expensive the watch, the more value, right? The more it's gonna bring you joy in life. I mean, why do we buy anything of any real value? Especially things like these trinkets that we don't really need. There's an expectation, I gather, that it's gonna bring you a sense of joy. There's gonna be pleasure in owning it, right? More money does not always mean more satisfaction. And quite honestly, more money can lead to more dissatisfaction. More money, more problems, not my line. But legitimately, right, the more money you spend on things, the higher the threshold of satisfaction there is to achieve because you just have a higher expectation of what it needs to deliver. And there's something nice about having a more affordable, attainable watch, which this is, under $1,000 comfortably and potentially with discounts, you're not looking at this watch to solve, you know, cancer, right? This is just a watch that you buy because you like. And quite honestly, most people that buy this watch are looking at it because they can't afford an AP Royal Oak and they want something that has that 70s, 80s flair. This watch, spoiler alert, delivers just as much joy to most people as any Audemars Piget Royal Oak, as any Patek Philippe Nautilus, or any other Rolex, Omega, you name it, or Amiga for my, my friends overseas. And I'll tell you why. A watch is just a watch. And what's, I think, lost on most people, and I know I'm gonna get flack for this, but let's just be straight up here. If a Martian landed on Earth and you were tasked with explaining to them why this watch costs under $1,000, but a stainless steel AP Royal Oak costs 30 to 40X the same, and they had no history of the brand, no understanding of our manufacturing processes, and they both held them in their hands side to side, it would be near impossible to explain why one has cost so much more than the other. And let's be real, they're both made out of stainless steel, they're both about the same size, they both keep similar time specs, and quite honestly, the Tissot is gonna be far cheaper to own long-term. Don't get me in this whole watches are a, a source of future equity and you can trade them and they're like basically an investment instrument. That's total nonsense. Our current watch market speaks to this. Yes, there are exceptions to this rule, but this watch will cost you less than one service on an AP Royal Oak. And guess what? If I blindfolded you and put this watch and a Royal Oak Jumbo in your hand, didn't tell you what you were holding, I'd be willing to bet most of you could not tell the difference. And I can say that because I've held a lot of APs, I've held a lot of Pateks, I own <laughs> quite a few watches of that caliber. And at the end of the day, they're just a watch. I'm not negating that those watches have their place in the market, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with an AP Royal Oak, but you're not getting an incremental level of satisfaction buying that watch. It's what that watch represents to you. When you're buying a watch at an AP level, you have expectations potentially of rewarding yourself for a life of hard work, and it's something that symbolizes how far you've come, which is a very meaningful thing to do, and I don't want to take away from that. Maybe you're just in love with the hand finishing that goes into that, that particular piece, you're in love with the story and you, you love the Gerald Genta design, whatever the reason is, I'm not negating that. But what I'm saying is intrinsically, a watch is a watch. As a watch lover myself, I can tell you the joy I get from wearing this watch is no less than the joy I get from wearing my Patek Philippe 5196 or my Rolex President. And I think that's what's so remarkable about this watch is it has such a feeling of solidity and it's just a beautifully designed watch. I mean, just look at the thing, the dial is gorgeous. And as a base of a watch, and we could talk about this as a watch, it's a great freaking watch. So it's called the Tissot Powermatic 80. Why? I know we're uh, very clever these days in marketing. Powermatic 80, 80 hours of power reserve. 80 hours is actually quite a bit. Most watches on the market today, you're lucky to get 44 to 48 hours of power reserve. Some of the bigger brands are up to 70 hours at this point. You know, I'm looking at you Rolex as an example. 80 hours is a lot. A lot, a lot. We're talking, let's do some basic math here, just under four days of power reserve. What this means is you can sit this watch down on a Friday evening, not pick it up again until Monday morning, 
it's still keeping time and you can put it right back on your wrist and move along. It's automatic, you wear it, it winds itself. There is definitely a, a niche for manual wind watches. I think of my Patek, I think of my Omega Speedmaster, I love them for that. But there is definitely a convenience factor with a watch that keeps itself wound. As long as you wear this thing a couple days a week, you're pretty much set. It has a water resistance of 330 feet. I wouldn't go swimming with this watch. They claim 330 feet, I'm sure you could do it. And I'm sure you could take it in the shower and wash dishes with it and you have nothing to worry about. Beyond that, your results may vary on what you can get away with. This watch, in my mind, is also the perfect size, 40 millimeter. Hear me out on this, because there's a lot of, there's both sides to this argument. I'm a person who likes slightly smaller watches and larger watches. So for me, any watch between 36 millimeters on the small end to 45, 46 millimeters on the large end, that range is very comfortable to me. I have a seven and a half inch wrist. I would say that's slightly bigger than average. I'm also almost six foot four. So to me, <laughs> I tend to wear larger watches, but to me 40 is honestly just the perfect size. When you wear something a little bit smaller, in general, it can kind of get lost on your on your wrist. Most watches, 40 millimeters to me is the right blend between, it's not a weight <laughs> on your wrist, but it's very legible. You can quickly see it at a glance. You can check the time and just appreciate that gorgeous style, which honestly is legitimately beautiful. I don't care that it's machine made. I don't care that, you know, people weren't sitting at a workbench in some workshop with a monocle, slowly carving out the little disc. To me, it is, it's beautiful. And let's be real, manufacturing itself is also pretty cool. I think people tend to highly value things that are man-made over things that are machine-made. And to be clear, I do too as well. However, those machines that make these parts were designed by men and women who are also geniuses. Engineering is its own beautiful thing to behold. But for these things to be made at such the regularity and precision that they are, somebody had to design that process too. So there is a, there's a human touch on every part of every watch. Let's just isolate that out. At the end of the day, to me, why this watch is such a great watch is it has 70s, 80s design. It has a historical movement in it. I know we're calling it the Powermatic 80. What this really is, it's an out of 2824. It's got an 80 hour power reserve. It's got anti-magnetic properties now. It's been, it's been modernized to be more usable in an everyday world. But what's so great about it is again, if I blindfolded you, the joy this watch would bring you, I could put this watch side by side with an AP in your hand and you wouldn't know the difference. And something else I'll tell you is some of these super high-end brands, they have cheapness in them too. Anybody that's held a Patek Nautilus, especially one that's over a couple of years old, take a look at the clasp on those things. They feel pretty cheap. Um, uh, I'm just saying you may want to take a look at that. If you're looking for a watch that you just really like the design of, that is going to be pretty rugged, that is, I think, a very fair price, supremely comfortable. This bracelet is very comfortable. One you could take around the world, not worrying about getting robbed, not worried about people getting in your way, and just create adventures with it. I really can't think of much of a better watch than this. When I think about what I want out of a watch, right, assuming you've graduated from, you're looking for self-satisfaction and fulfillment and your friends telling you, you look rich. Assuming you've, you've graduated for that, and if you haven't, one day you'll get there and I, I promise you it's worth getting over that hump. What makes a good watch a good watch, right? To me, it's all about the travel experience. It's about my side companion. Watches mark chapters in our life. And I can distinctly think of different situations in my life, chapters in my life, experiences both very positive and very negative. I can think of the watches that I was wearing on those occasions. They very much are, they mark the passage of time, the, the passage of chapters in my life that were both incredibly difficult and incredibly rewarding. I'll give you an example with this particular watch. This watch to me is always going to be associated with my traveling through Alaska and getting to see the glaciers and just kind of bumping around Juneau as an example, Juneau, Alaska. That's meaningful to me. Every time I look at this watch, I think about all over the world that's traveled with me. This watch has sat with me at the controls of a uh, Sturgeon class submarine. It has wandered along countless beaches. It has been all over the United States. It's been outside the United States. And every time I look at it, it legitimately brings me joy. There's nothing about this watch that disappoints me. It is supremely comfortable. The dial is beautiful. And what's really, again, nice for me about this watch is I just look at it and I, I remember about where it's been with me and I'm just excited to bring it new places. I know that sounds kind of silly, but at the end of the day, that's what a watch should be about. It shouldn't be about oppressing your friends. It should be about a companion that you mark chapters of your life with, my personal opinion. But for what a watch is about, this watch is phenomenal. And so 
Hope you found that helpful. This watch to me is a buy all day long. I would just go pick it up. If this watch speaks to you at all, legitimately, just buy it. It's a beautiful watch. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed at all. But what do you think, right? So I'm just a guy shouting out opinions on the internet. I'm a dime a dozen on here. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think that watches should be more than that? Help me understand what I'm totally missing here on the point. Also, legitimately, I'd be curious what stories you've created with your own watches. Or tell me about something that happened with you with one of your watches that is very poignant that you remember. I'm a very uh, sentimental kind of guy, and so I appreciate this waffling. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in and gals. I know there's a few of you out there. I appreciate you too. Have a uh, wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys pretty soon on the next video. See you later.